You may be seated. Good morning, everybody. Is it Grandparents' Day? Are we celebrating that today? Somebody asked me that. I wasn't sure. I do have a prayer request here. Please add prayers for the family of Kenny Miller, who passed away this past week. Are there any other announcements? Anybody else? Oh, and also the workers that are trying to, if you can be here a little before two, we know who you are. John? Evening Bible study at Wednesday at 6.30. Anybody else? All right, great. Thank you. You got that. All right. All right, please stand. I'm filling in today for Dave, so please bear with me. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, always lead and follow us with your grace, that we may be still more intent on doing good. Grant this, we pray, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence my light. Be thou my wisdom, Thou my true word, I ever with thee, and thou with me, Lord. Thou my great Father, and I thy true Son. Thou in me dwelling, and I with thee one. Riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise thou mine inheritance now and always thou and thou only first in my heart my king of heaven my treasure thou art my king of heaven my victory won may i reach heaven's joys O bright heaven's sun heart of my own heart whatever befall still be my vision O ruler of all heart of my own Today's first reading is from Isaiah chapter 35, beginning with verse 4. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. Here ends the reading. We'll now read responsibly Psalm 146. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. When they breathe their last, they return to earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. Who made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them, who keeps his promise forever. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. The second reading is from James chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place, 
while you say to the poor man, you stand over there or sit down at my feet. Have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which they were, you were called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbors as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. Whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works and I will show you my faith by my works. Here ends the reading. The reading today comes out of the book of Mark, uh, the uh, seventh chapter, the 24th through 30, and then 31 through 37. And from there he arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and would not have anyone know it, yet he could not be hid. But immediately a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Greek a Syrophician by birth, and she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, let the children first be fed, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, yes, Lord, even the dogs under the table eat children's crumbs. And he said to her, for this saying, you may go on your way. The demon has left your daughter. And she went home and found the child lying in bed and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee through the region of Decapolis. And they brought him a man who was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they besought him to lay his hand upon him. And taking him aside from the multitude privately, he put his fingers in his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. And looking up to the heavens, he sighed and said to him, Katie and I worked on this before I came up, and I'm going to be stuck on it. Ephathus, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And he charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealous they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, he has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the dumb to speak. The word of God for the people of God. You 
may be seated. We have a children's sermon this morning. I don't know if she was advising me or warning me, but she... Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for being patient with me. Does anyone here like to color? Do you guys like to color? I do, too. Ellie, can you open that box of crayons for me? Can you open this for me? Here, I'm going to take that. All right. Ooh, what's in there? Are there some crayons? Yeah, let's dump them out. Well, I would like your guys' help coloring this. Uh, do we see some brown? Can you start coloring that little fox for me? Thank you. Can you find the orange crayon in there for me? Is there any orange in there? Oh, no orange. Okay. Do we have any yellow? Yeah. Could you maybe color a leaf for me? Can you guys work together? Thank you. So there's no orange in there. Hmm. Do you guys see it anywhere? Can you look in the box for me? Ellie, do you have the orange? No. No orange. Okay, that's all right. Well, let's figure out. We already figured out the orange one is missing. And this kind of reminds me um, of our church a little bit. Okay, the box of crayons. And sometimes people aren't here. And when they're not here, do we miss them? Yes, we do. We miss you when you're not here. You guys can stop. You don't have to keep it going if you don't want to. But you're doing a really nice job. You guys do like to color, don't you? Thank you. Well, each one of us has something special to offer, not only our church, but more importantly to God's kingdom. And we're so happy that we're all, we all have a special part to play. Some of us like to sing. Do any of you like to sing? Good. I already know some of you like to decorate things. Anyone like to organize? Oh, good. Sort of? Good. How about, does anybody like to listen to friends and maybe help them when they're confused or sad? That's good. Absolutely. And some of us are sharing Bible stories. Good at that. Some of us are good at building or fixing things in our church. We all have something inside us that makes us important. And if you're not sure what that gift is, just be patient, <clears throat> excuse me, and God will show you what that special gift is. In Romans chapter 12, verse 6, it tells us we each have different gifts according to the grace of God. So let's go ahead. Can you guys help me put these crayons back in here for me? And just like our church building, we can all fit inside this church building, inside this box with each of our gifts. Some of us are young, some of us are a little older, some of us have our tips broken a little bit, but we all play a part in not only our church, but also the kingdom of God. So I have some, ra oh, I found the orange, they got dumped out. So just like when you guys are absent or not here at church or you're homesick, we think about you and we miss you. Yeah, now we can get that orange pumpkin. Can you stick that back in there? Thanks, Ellie, for helping. Can you get that in there? Oh, boy, you are good help. You're a good helper. You're good at organizing. Thanks. Oh, they all fit in there just perfectly, just like our church. Oh have to shove it back in there. There we go. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for these children and um, uh, having them here at church with us. And we ask 
um, for your guidance this week as we make our good choices and help our friends and maybe discover a new gift that we have that we can glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Good morning. It sure was a beautiful fall morning. We had 37 degrees over in Fredericktown this morning. That's getting a little nippy. Uh, I was reminded that today is Grandparents Day, and that kind of got me thinking. A couple of weeks ago, Katie and I were at the Dairy Bell in uh, Belleville, and there was a grandma there, and apparently her granddaughter was working behind the counter, and grandma was uh, trying to pay for something that apparently the granddaughter just wanted to give her. And at one point, the granddaughter, she, they were very busy, but she kind of snapped at Grandma and she said, Grandma, just forget it. And I walked up to Grandma and I said, she doesn't know grandmas don't forget. <laughs> so I hope you all have a good grandparent day today. It's certainly a beautiful day for it. And it's good to be back here with you guys again. Uh, I happened to listen to the, to the message last week on uh, YouTube, and I noticed that they were talking about how something broken, meaning us, can be made into a beautiful mosaic. I also remembered that a few weeks ago I talked to you about how God created us to be stained glass windows and how we can, uh, if we are a stained glass window, how we can allow God to shine through us. Those are both beautiful thoughts, and yet they're a little challenging. Uh, sometimes we wake up in the morning and we don't feel as beautiful as we ought, and it becomes a, a task for us to go through the day uh, remembering that, that Jesus Christ would like to shine through us or remembering that because we are no longer broken, we're a beautiful mosaic and we need to... Uh, to let other people see that, that we have something that maybe they desire. The other thing that kind of step, stuck out to me was Amber's reminder that I'm only allowed to talk for 12 minutes, and that one went 15 plus last week. So I'm, I think you owe me a few minutes today, so I hope you brought a mustard sandwich and are ready to stick around for a while. Mark's gospel today is filled with two wonderful accounts of of people who had great hope. You know, it was a time when the, when the 
rumors uh, about the things that Jesus was doing, was, was getting out to the people, about no matter how he tried to keep it down, uh, they just kept talking about the wonderful things Jesus was doing. But uh, we also, we have, we have at least one of those accounts today, the woman who was worried about her possessed daughter, uh, who was a Gentile. And she wasn't even sure she could be in the same room with Jesus, let alone ask him for something. And it was because of her great hope and faith in what Jesus might be able to do for her. Uh, Jesus saw that and, uh, and I, I guess you could say rewarded her or answered her prayer. And the daughter was, was healed. And that's a, that's a wonderful thing. And it's, it's a great gospel reading today. But you have to bear with me a little bit because anytime I have a chance to to dwell on the book of James, I just kind of like that. The book of James was the book uh, Brandy and David gave me a study Bible back in the day when I needed a study Bible, and I read through it, and it was full of good stuff, good good direction, good instruction, but the book of James kind of struck home with me because, in my opinion, the book of James is where we learn how to apply the instructions that were given in the other books of the Bible. So I like, to, I like to preach on that when I get a chance. I like to let you know that it was then that I realized that I could be made new through the loving grace of our Father God and that I could change. No matter how much I thought I couldn't change, if I surrendered myself to God, I could be changed. And that's good news and it's something that I like to share with you all. The book of James, I have to stop and go down just one little rabbit trail. Back when I was in uh, Holy Trinity and it was time for confirmation, in the Catholic Church you had to pick a saint's name, you had to know a little bit about him, and you had to pick a saint's name for your confirmation name. So I'm a kid about, I don't know, 12 years old, probably a little cocky, maybe a little sarcastic back then, but I thought how cool it would be. My name is Joseph Jerome. When everybody else was trying to figure out some great saint name for their confirmation, I came up with the great idea that if I picked St. James, I would be called JJJ. And how cool could that be? Fast forward 50, 60 years, and I realized the book of James is the book that turned my life around, the book that made me want to make Jesus Christ the Lord in my life. So I guess Jesus gets the last laugh on that one. It's a starting point for me. It was, uh, uh, to my mind, when I, when I read the book of James, it made sense. It was kind of like where the rubber meets the road. If you're going to say you're a Christian, you need to act like a Christian. You need to understand what acting like a Christian is and then try your best to be that. So it made a, made a whole lot of difference in my life, and I would only hope that my excitement and my talking about it today might somehow encourage you to, uh, if nothing else, just stick your head in the book of James a little more often. And I, I included the whole uh, 1 through 18 reading this morning because it's good stuff, and the verses that they left out talk about mercy, triumphing judgment, and how we, need to, how we need to live our life, how we need to uh, speak as though we know we are going to be judged for what we do in this world. That's kind of an important thing. If you don't feel that there's any, any response to your actions, that makes it pretty uh, easy to just go your separate way and do whatever. But the book of James tells us that we will be held accountable for what we do. And we need to show those who haven't caught on yet just what we're talking about. It's very important stuff. Um, It's kind of, like I said, it kind of helps me to apply myself. It helps me to find a reasoning for my direction. Um, There's things that I've thought about over the course of of my ministry. One of the things that always touched me was uh, how King David wanted to be a man after God's own heart, how I would like to be known as a man after God's own heart. And sometimes that sounds like a little lofty goal, maybe something that not too many of us would consider ourselves able to do, be a man after God's own heart, be a person after God's own heart. 
But remember this, David didn't always keep his ship upright either. David has his own problems and his own downfalls. So it's not like David was some super human Christian. David was just a man, but he was a man who was after God's own heart. And there's a great older song by, by uh, the third day saying, I'm, God, I'm running for your heart. I'm running for your heart. I want my soul to be on fire. You know, you'll talk to people and they'll talk about somebody who went on a mission trip or they went away on a weekend retreat or some kind of seminar and they came home and their hearts were on fire. I don't know how many of you have ever experienced that feeling, but we have to be careful because it oftentimes extinguishes just about as fast as it ignited and we find ourselves less on fire. We need to we need to reinvigorate ourselves. I don't know if I shared that with you back in the weeks that I was here before, but my, my word for this year was to reinvigorate, to remind myself that I need to have a soul that's on fire, that I need to be excited about being a Christian, that I need to be excited about the realization that I don't have to go to hell. You know, we don't hear about hell a lot of times in, in the churches today, and we need to understand that hell is real and we don't want to go there. And God has shown us a way through his loving grace, being covered by his blood, that we don't have to go there. And I just want to touch a little bit before I quit about this partiality trap that, that uh, James talks about at the very beginning. Katie and I were in a church, oh, it's been quite a few years back, and a, a man started to come and he was very, uh, very much part of the church. You could tell that he was interested in the church. But it also became obvious to me, and I was on my way out. I was going to leave that July. And I used the term that I thought he was uh, trying to buy a church. Uh, it was very hard to turn him down because he had a little money and he was ready to share it with the church. All the things that we would like to see a new member be in our church. But it also appeared to me that he had a a big family and he was trying to have a place where his grandkids could sing and his grandkids could preach. And, and I use the term, maybe it was a little crude that he was trying to buy a church for his family. But within about two years after me leaving, he had in fact kind of taken over the church and be, had become the part, uh, I don't believe we've ever had that problem here, but like if you don't do it my way, I'll take my ball and go home. That was the way he started to be. So it was, a, it was a time when maybe that partiality that we show towards somebody that we think is going to be a great asset to our church can actually come back uh, to, to bite us. And, and we have to be very careful about that. Sometimes it's the man who you would uh, maybe tell to sit at your feet might end up being the good, solid member of a church that we would all like to have. I just want to remind you of that trap that's, that's pretty easy for us to to fall into. So let me close with this. They talk about in, in, in this very, uh, very scripture about faith without works is dead. And I just want to mention that I believe it's impossible when you accept Jesus Christ into your heart, when you actually try to make Jesus Christ Lord of your life, it's impossible not to have that act out. It's impossible for you to be harboring Jesus Christ in your heart and not want to do something about it. I can tell you from the standpoint, I just told Katie the other day as we were hobbling around the grocery store, wasn't she really glad that she listened to me when I said, back when we were 50 years old, let's do our ministry now instead of waiting till we're 80 to try to do it. I said, when we're 80, I'll be sitting out on the front porch and you'll be feeding me pablum and we won't feel like going to Texas and and gone to Arizona and working with the Navajo Indians and all the exciting things that God led us to do. We need to understand that if we accept Jesus Christ, if we accept him and make him Lord of our life, he's going to lead us some places that maybe we wouldn't have gone without that. Maybe it's a little bit out of our comfort zone, but it's ever so rewarding. So I want to remind you about that. Faith without works is dead. And I want to remind you of that other thing that it says in James, that... Mercy triumphs over judgment. We're at a time in this world where mercy is going to come into a play with us. Judgment seems to be easily obtained. Everybody has an opinion. 
but mercy is a little harder to get. As Christians, I believe we have to remember that it's our job to have that kind of mercy and to show that kind of mercy to people as we go through our life. Remember that great song? I was going to try to get a hold of Tom and see if he would sing that. Uh, I love it because it's, it's so very true. And the song is, they will know we are Christians by our love. Amen. Amen. Let's arise for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty and everlasting God, by your great mercy in Jesus Christ, your Son, you have given us forgiveness of sin and all things pertaining to life and godliness. Grant that your Holy Spirit may, all, may so rule in our hearts that we may put to death all fleshly and worldly desires, serve you in holiness and purity, and give you continual thanks for all your goodness. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all the work that you have given to us to do and for your gifts of strength and knowledge to do it well. Grant satisfaction for each work well done and eagerness to serve you daily in the labor we perform. Remind us that even the most ordinary tasks have extraordinary blessings when done in your name and to your praise and glory. As we enjoy our daily bread, make us mindful of the needs of others and let us labor for their sakes as well. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, grant courage and wisdom to our national leaders, to all who serve in the government, <clears throat> and to the members of our armed forces. Guide them in the way of justice and truth. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Mighty healer, you encourage us not to worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's challenge is caused to reach out to you on behalf of friends and loved ones. Clothe your children in the glory of your loving presence today and always, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Sorry, missed that part. <laughs> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on, on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord.